So if you're playing buzzword bingo at Velocity Conference, I'm going to give you your extra square. I'm going to talk about images. So we all know that images are an important part of our visual experience. Who doesn't want to have a nice, rich, crisp website with lots of great images? And we know that images are growing in size and that 60% of the average website now is of images. And if you look to your right or left, I'm willing to bet that you are sitting beside one of the giants in our community that has advocated for high-performance images. And so this is the conversation I want to start today. Just let's take a step back and look at where we've come. And so I want to stand on the shoulders of these giants, of Laura Hogan and Ilya and Jason Grigsby and Tim Cadillac and, and many others that I haven't mentioned, and talk about image. So let's step into our Wayback Machine and go back to 1989. Ooh. All right. So in 1989, we have the great image tag that wasn't there. It wasn't part. It was intended to be the next document. It was never really expected to be an image. But fortunately, by 1992, we get, we get, the, uh, we get the nice image tag that the Mosaic group had inline images, and they saw a need. And so by the time we get a spec in place, it looks beautiful. Of course, uh, by the time we get to Netscape in 95, they've started doing more innovation on this, and they introduced the low source tag. Why? Well, because dial-up sucks. So why don't we give them a, a placeholder? By the time we get to 2000, though, the low source tag is left on the waste bin of history because, well, we've got faster internet connections and, well, we've got a lot more browsers that don't follow the same, uh, the same spec that Netscape had. And we enter into this dark ages of images where not much happens. Oh, okay, well, so we get JPEG and PNG support becoming ubiquitous and we've got some interesting ideas about scalable vectors and SVG is interesting but nobody supports it and so everybody uses Flash to do that work. And it really isn't until we get to responsive images where we start to talk mobile, becoming the thing. We want to have the best experience for the right size of device because we realize that, hey, these devices are small, they're low powered, it's not great on the, on the networks either, and we need to send the right size image to the right display. But our first attempts at responsive images aren't that great. I mean, it's... Uh, lots of JavaScript, it happens way too late in the experience, and uh, geez, we can do better. Well, fast forward to the last year this time, and the first, the first browsers uh, come onto the stage that support the new responsive images spec. This is great. Now you can tell the browser all the right sizes that you can support for this single placeholder, and let the browser select the right one. Uh, um, so then we have the picture tag. And the picture is also part of this spec because it supports the next, uh, it supports the next level of uh, images. Because we've talked about uh, WebP and JPEG XR and, and uh, all, the great, all the great formats. But if we put this together and we put it all in one HTML, we get this monstrosity. That's a lot of boilerplate. Sure, we've given the browser all the great uh, information to select one of the image formats of the right sizes, but there's a lot of things that could go wrong with this if I don't copy and paste it right, if I don't uh, manage the right experience for the user, and uh, we can do better. So let's fast forward to a few weeks from now, into the future, because we can do better, and that future includes simplify it down to this, just the sizes. And with client hints, thanks to the work by uh, Ilya and Yoav, will allow us to move the communication to the client hints between the browser and the uh, server. And now you can move that large amount of goop to the back-end systems. But here's where the crux is. The problem is that we have still the same problem of a lot of images to, to manage. Because while we've simplified their HTML, we're not going to be exposed to the same amount of, of complexity. We have to store those images somewhere. And in fact, if, if you want to do response images, you're looking at a 10 to 100 time 
increase in the size of volume of images you have to manage. Talking to a, an analyst recently, they said the number one reason why most companies don't adopt responsive images is because of infrastructure and operations pushback. How are you going to DR all of those extra images? How are you going to manage that uh, terabytes of extra small size images? And so this is where we at Akamai have been thinking hard about. How do we help your operations teams simplify their, uh, the needs so that you can provide high-performing images to your user base? How do we simplify it and select the right browser, the right format, the right size, based on the right network, and without you having to manage all the, uh, all the details of infrastructure? So this is where the next part of the problem is. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, visit us at our booth and pick up a copy of High Performing Images. Thank you.